Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo and this is part four of the ultimate smart home guide for 2020. To briefly recap what we have covered in the guide so far, part zero was the intro. We kind of went over all the different parts of the guide and what to cover. Part one was what is a smart home? Part two was what are the benefits of a smart home? And part three was what kind of smart home devices are out there? Here in part four, we're gonna talk about how to control all these different smart home devices. If you guys have liked the video so far, please hit that like and subscribe button because it helps out the channel and you won't miss out on the next installments of the guide. So how do you control your smart home devices? Well, there are six different ways that I've sort of come up with that you can control your device and we're gonna first list them out and then we're gonna go over them individually. You can physically interact with the device. You can physically interact with one device that controls another. You can use the device app on your phone. You can use something like a home app on your phone. You can use a smart speaker to control the device. And you can set up automation so the devices work on their own. So let's start with the first one, which is physical interaction with the device. This means that something like a smart switch, for example, you press it and it does what it's supposed to do. It turns on the light. For smart lighting, physical interaction is probably the easiest way to control these devices because it's just like you've been controlling them your whole life. Now, the reason I say this is the most convenient is because if you're, let's say, walking into a room and you just wanna grab something, but it's kinda of dark, pressing a switch just like you always have been is the quickest and easiest way for that light to turn on versus having to fumble for your phone or ask the voice assistant in your room to do it. It's just a lot quicker to just press the switch, have the light turn on, press it to leave, done. There are also scenarios in which physical interaction is very inconvenient. For example, a smart plug often has a button on it, but if you have like a lamp plug into a smart plug, you don't wanna to have to reach down behind a couch to interact with a smart plug to turn your lamp on. That's just silly. Now, the second way I mentioned controlling your devices is with an accessory device. This would be like the smart button I have here that has four different buttons and each one will control my smart lights in a different way. This is often very convenient when there is no physical way to interact with the device itself. So instead of using a remote to control it. A great example of this is the lamp behind me that is a color hue light and I have the hue remote. So I can program each of those buttons to have a different sort of scene arrangement for the lights behind me. Now the next two are very similar, but I do want to touch on their differences and their benefits of each one. They are controlling an app using the device app and then using something like a home app. The device app controls only devices from that specific brand. A home app on the other hand is designed to be compatible with a variety of different applications so you can control your entire home from one single app. Device apps are fine to use if you have a bunch of different devices from that specific brand. For example, Hue has a lot of functionality specifically within their app that isn't able to be accessed through something like the Home app. More often than not, your smart home will be comprised of a mishmash of different devices from different brands. So having to go into each device brand's app to control it is not something you'll ever really want to do, and you'll always want to have a dedicated Home app that can control all of your smart home at once. Using your phone does have its merits. For example, it is pretty much the only way you can control devices when you are away from your home. So if you're out, you're gonna have to use your phone. Alternatively, it can also be just really convenient if you're already on your phone, like many of us are, to quickly just go into an app and turn a light on or off because while well, it's already there in front of you, you don't have to break your concentration and do something else. The next one is probably the most common way that people control their smart homes, and that is using a smart speaker. Google and Amazon are practically giving away smart speakers. You can get an Echo Dot or a Google Home Mini basically for free at any time. So most people already have them in their homes. Now, as you build on your smart home, these devices are most likely gonna be compatible with the Echo Dot or the Nest Mini. And that means that you can then just yell at it from across the room and control said device. Once again, this has its time and place when it's best to use it, when it doesn't really make sense to use it. As with the previous examples, if you're on the couch and getting ready for a movie night and just yell across the room, Alexa, it's movie time, that's super convenient. And there's also a sort of level of coolness associated with it because it's kind of like having this futuristic smart home where you're yelling at your home to do something for you. The other thing to consider with smart speakers is that depending on how many you have in your home, that will then determine which parts of the home you can obviously use it in. If you only have one in the living room, well then obviously when you go to the bedroom, you can't use that smart speaker to control 
anything in your bedroom. Last, we're gonna to touch on automations, which is basically you setting up a set of rules that your smart home follows, and then the devices basically turn it on and off by themselves. As I've mentioned in previous videos, automations are what really makes a smart home smart. The example I keep using is your lights automatically turning off when you leave your house and then automatically turning on when you come home. With automations, you can specify all sorts of rules and parameters so they're not just big blanket statements and they really are tailored exactly to kind of how you live your life. The next section of the smart home is all about automation, so stay tuned for that video because that's where I'm gonna cover all the different automations you can do and personally go over all the different automations I have set up in my smart home to give you a really good idea of what that looks like. When it comes to controlling your smart home, there is no one set way of doing it that is better than the others. It depends on how many people live in your house, how many people are tech savvy, what your routines are like. Ultimately, it's gonna be up to you sort of tinker and play with different variations and figure out what combination of ways of controlling your smart home make your home smart for you. If there's one rule that I would follow when it comes to setting up a smart home and controlling your smart home is that you always wanna add functionality. By adding functionality, you add convenience and that's ultimately what having a smart home is all about. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you control your smart home and what devices you guys have. I decided to release these videos on a Monday, Thursday schedule, so be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and hit that notification icon so you don't miss out on the next part of the Ultimate Smart Home Guide. And until next time, see ya.